Let's talk some sports, baby. Take it by Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Jones. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we going to do. We going to holler at you until next time, baby. All right, guys, we'll wrap up tonight with the NFC South grades. The Bucks got Tom Brady some more help. The Saints pulled an anti-Packers and actually helped their quarterback and the Falcons and Panthers while they try to get back to their winning ways. So, Jay, uh, you called it, right? The Panthers drafted a whole new defense. What do you think? <laughs> I sure did. Uh, shout out to Matt Rule on this one, uh, doing this thing right in his first year as head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Uh, I gave him four players coming back on this defense that uh, he should uh, retain and start with starting caliber. And sure enough, he took seven, uh, seven players in this draft, all defensive. Uh, I gave him the A minus. Only reason it's not an A. Uh, I would have took Isaiah Simmons, but I'm not going to knock you but so much for picking Derek Brown. I think he's going to be an absolute stud at this level. So, yeah, you can go ahead and go out there to the practice facility. They got under uh, under construction signs on the defensive side of the field. So, yeah, I, I, I love what they did. Yeah, I agree with Jay. I mean, the last defense play I seen running on on a little excerpt on ESPN, he had on a hard hat. So uh, that, <clears throat> that that tell you something about that defense. But uh, just like Jay, I gave my A minus. Uh, the first pick, Derrick Brown, defense tackle out of Auburn. They took him seven overall. A a, a ridiculous, strong, and athletic guy for a defensive tackle. A superior run stopper and pass rusher. But I would say. He has to improve on staying upright more. Uh, he has a tendency of being on the ground a lot because he, he, he got to work on his balance, so he needs to fix that. And then uh, with the second pick, they took your turn, Grouse Mata, defense end out of Penn State with the 38th pick. Hey, he is the phototypical combination of size, athleticism, and agility. Okay? Um, he, has an, he's a, he has adequate upfield rushing bursts. His twist is fluent and fast. And um, his, his, as a pro, his hand's going to need to be a little more quicker. I'm not saying that they're slow or anything, but they need to be a little, little quicker. He needs to be more violent at the tackle of the rush. But um, with all that said, I think they got a good guy there. And then uh, Jeremy Chin, the, the safety out of Southern Illinois, they took him with the uh, 64th pick. Hey, he has the NFL size, uh, so that's good. He got length, muscle co- uh, composition. Okay, good. And uh, speed, he has good speed for sharper pursuit angles, which is number one, what you really want out of your safety for a guy to be able to do that. Um, but some some of the, the faults with him, uh, he's not as instinctive as he needs to be when you're playing on the back end of that defense. So he's going to have to up his football IQ. It's a little below average right now. Don't sound like something the NFL can't fix, so we'll see that. And he need to eliminate the head ducking. Uh, He's one of those guys that like to go head first. I'm telling you right now, you, you, you might want to go look at Ryan Shazier. This is nothing to play with. You might want to pick your head up and do some good form tackling, or that'll be the end of your career quite fast. Yeah, I uh, like you said, Jay. I mean, they went right down the list. All new defense, seven plus four is eleven. But yeah, you know, I was uh, singing the praises of Derek Brown from the get go. I think he's an outstanding player, and he's going to be really good for quite a while. And I, I, like you said, I can't, I couldn't knock that pick at all. Uh, Gross Matos is a guy that I think he does have some limitations, like you said, Drink. Like he doesn't have that trump card that, like, oh, this is what I'm the best at, you know. So, but at thirty eight, that's a really solid value. I mean, if you even take it at twenty, I'd have been like, eh. but thirty eight. I mean, hey, if he's still there. Why not? Come on down. So he'll, he should pair well across from Brian Burns, you know, and like you, like you talked a lot about Jeremy Chen, you know, he's kind of your, maybe your budget Isaiah Simmons. He had a lot of that same kind of bill, but it's one of those things where, where does he really fit on this uh, defense? So they're going to have to take a little bit of time to figure out exactly where they want him, but they double dip with Bravion Roy on day three on the interior of the defensive line. It's going to help you uh, move on from Quan Short's big contract sooner than later. So, I mean, you know, down the line, they drafted what they needed and I, it's a little scary to just ignore a side of the ball completely. I don't think many teams have ever done that, but you know, see how it goes. Uh, I gave him a B plus. All right, drink. I'll uh, get the Buccaneers up next. How you think they did with the uh, Tom Brady group? Oh, you know, TBs and Grunk. You know, they went down and made an impact. But as far as you know, what they did in the draft, hey, I gave them uh, that hot steam and uh, ace kid. You know, they 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 <laughs> aced the draft. Um, you at first they took Tristan Worth, the offensive tackle out of Iowa, with the 13 overall pick. Once again, another Iowa guy, neither here nor there. All right, look, this guy's quick out of his stance. He get into his work. 
He's above. He's an above average technician coming into the league, so he should only get better when when he gets more tools in his toolbox, and he has the ability to flip from right tackle to left or from left to right, whichever one you need him at, he can get the job done. The problem is he has average explosiveness at the initial contact. He got to get better with that. You're playing against grown men, not little boys. And he tends to lean to his outside foot when punching. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to put you on your back a lot, and you're going to be out here looking like Eric Flowers when he was playing for uh, the Giants. That, that ain't going to cut it. So you're going to have to fix that and open up your post. Then with the second pick, they took Antonio Whitfield, Jr., the safety out of Minnesota with the 45th pick, a highly instinctive. He's always under control. He know how to take cues from the opposing quarterback. I like to hear that from a safety. Safety that know how to read the quarterback and see what he's trying to do. There's a chess match out there. And he, his ball tracking seems to come natural. He can track that ball very well. Uh, he did, however, miss some extensive time in 2017 and 2018 due to injuries. So that is something that I'm pretty sure the Bucks looked into while, you know, thinking about drafting this guy. But that is one thing. If it tends to hinder him in his NFL career, we'll see. And then, uh, and then also, he's, a, he's below average when it comes to height and length on jump balls. Uh, what I have seen, um, you, you can't throw the ball over his head if, if you get a tall enough receiver. So, I mean, there's nothing he could do about his size. I, I know maybe it's a technique out there to save him, but there's nothing he could really do about the size. Um, so, <clears throat> had to, with that, uh, and then with the third pick, T, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, the running back out of Vanderbilt, they took him with the 76 pick. Runs with patience on outside zones, very, very good. And one thing I found very interesting while doing this research, uh, he scored a touchdown every 16.5 touches at Vanderbilt. So every, every time, every 16 times, basically he touched the ball, he scored a touchdown. I mean, it's Vanderbilt. Who else going to score touchdowns for you? So you got to give him to somebody. And I guess he was the guy. Uh, he plays up to his size and his strength as a, plaz, a pass blocker. That's probably the number one thing that co uh, running back coaches look for when they get these young running backs in the NFL. They want you to be able to block. And it, But um, listen, his vision, his ability to create, it is going to come as a struggle. So they're going to have to work on him with that. Um, and listen, he got he got to learn how to move his feet faster. He he a little stiff in the in the hole. I remember Derrick Henry had this problem when he was at Alabama. He seems to have been working on it and got better. You got to be able to move those feet to get through holes a lot faster. Yeah, solid draft for me. The Bucks get a B. Uh, they traded up one spot, but they just wanted to make sure they had to upgrade this offensive line with Tom Brady coming here and there, and they did just that. Getting Tristan Wirfs, I thought he was the second best offensive tackle in this draft. I uh, really like that. The Antoine Winfield pick, I love it. Uh, that secondary was, yeah, we talked about it. Carlton Davis is the name I most recognize, and uh, that's that's not good. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to – I don't hate the Keyshawn Vaughn pick, but what I will tell you is I would have hoped – I would have hoped I would have liked to see more picks, at least one more, to further address that secondary. I still think there's a whole lot of holes back there. So they, they did not – uh, put further capital into the secondary. I don't like that. I think that's something we got to pay attention to moving forward. Uh, in the fifth round, though, I do like Tyler Johnson, another guy out of Minnesota. I like what I saw from him last year and uh, under PJ Fleck. I think he's. I think that's good value there in the fifth round. Yeah, this is a, a draft I liked a lot. It was best in the division, in my opinion. Uh, you know, assuring the pickup of Werfs all the way down there at 13 was really good. And that's a guy that, again, could have gone top 10, and he didn't. And I doubt they thought he was going to be there. But, you know, protecting Brady's blind side, we all know that the best way to get to beat Tom Brady is to just get to him and put him on the ground. And uh, getting the best tackles in this draft is probably the best decision the team could have made, period. Uh, you know, Winfield, like y'all said, is, he's a smart, instinctive safety. He can do a little bit of everything. And like you said, that, that, that secondary, it needs an insurance policy big time. Um, I know they talked. They they did. They had talked to the Jaguars about Fournette, but they decided to take Keyshawn Vaughn instead. I would. I don't know. I maybe would have been more apt to make the trade if I was Tampa Bay, given that kind of win now window they've got, instead of taking sort of a project running back that's you know could be nice, but he's like Drake says, he's got some stuff to work on. He's not going to be a day one home run. Um, but yeah, Tyler Johnson was my day three sleeper. I, I love that they uh, picked him up. You know, that's an embarrassment of riches in that wide receiving room now. And it's just another weapon for Brady, who's ar already arguably has some of the best weapons he's had in his career and now he gets another one good, good, good gosh so yeah uh, i gave this one an a all right jay uh falcons are up next what do you think I, I you know i really don't even know what this is the, the falcons they got me so uninterested right now this they like a salad with no dressing i mean i'm telling you <laughs> like they got aj terrell in here in the first round i'm gonna tell you 
sometimes that last, sometimes first impressions are most telling. Well, last impressions matter too. And the last time we saw you, you was getting your butt roasted out there by anybody that could run a route over there at LSU. Not saying he was the only one. There's a lot of blame to go around on that defense in that national championship game. But I'm just not sold here. Uh, he was great. He, he was receiving a lot of second ground raise from what I can see. And he, you picked him with the 16th overall pick. I mean, you needed help at corner. I can't knock you too much for that. But uh, biggest pick right here, I, I like the Marlon Davidson pick. I like that they're going to get a little bit more physical up front. But, but by and large, that, there's a lot of met to this draft, and you, you're not getting graded higher than a C with that in mind. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that that was good, Jay. I like that. I like that analogy. I try to eat a salad with nothing on it. Let me just tell you, that ain't it. Um, AJ Terrell, the cornerback out of Clemson, <laughs> they took him 16 overall. Like Jay said, bit of a reach, but hey, you need a cornerback help. Let's see if this does anything for you. He has the ability to ground on receivers from press coverage. We seen him playing high leverage, high leverage matchups in the college football playoffs. Some good, some not so good. Um, so you, you take that for what it's worth that you picked the dude 16 overall. I thought I ain't even going to get into it. Um, he uh, he plays, you know, receivers in tight quarters. He disrupts their timing. I think that's good. But, hey, to, to talk about some of the concerns, listen, he's not good with jump balls. We've seen that. Jamar Chase gave him the, the pure business when Joe Burrow just threw the ball up. He – I don't know why, because Jamal Chase is not, like, crazy tall, but he got problems with handling that ball in the app. And he's a bit of an arm tackler. That ain't it. You ain't tackling with arms in the, in the NFL. Like, you leave that crap right in college. So I can tell you right now, if he don't fix that tackling, he will. he's going to be a first-round bust. And then the second one, second pick, you got Marlon Davidson, the defensive end out of Auburn with the 47 pick. Hey, he could play standing up or he could play hands down. Now, that's a little interesting because we have seen teams that try to manipulate certain things and try to make the quarterback think this is happening, that happening. So I thought that was uh, pretty unique. Um, he got nimble foot when it comes to lateral movement. That means he can move left to right, right to left pretty quick for a guy of his size. There's also something to look at. His hand usage is at the top of the, the, the rush is very efficient. He knows how to bulldoze you. He knows how to get you off balance. We'll see. And, but um, listen, his footwork and his contact balance is uh, inconsistent. If you don't know what I mean, go back and look at his play against Alabama. Those offensive lines did kind of put him at, in bad situations a lot because his footwork wasn't quite where it needed to be, which means he lost his balance. We made it very easy to open up certain holes for Najee Harris in that game. Hey, and he don't gain big grounds once he bit, once he bend that edge. Meaning, once he bends the edge, it takes him a while to go from the edge to the quarterback. He got to speed that up a little bit to give himself more of an advantage to try to get the sack. And then with the third pick, they took Mac Hennessy, the the, sec, uh, the center out of Temple with the 78th pick. He has a consistent balance and posture and pass as a pass set, he, he, so he can protect pretty well and pass him pretty much. Um, Hands are, are quite good. He's always ready to punch. Hey, he can hold his own against double teams, which is something you really want to see because we see some of these guys get beat in double teams, which I don't understand it, but it is what it is. And um, But, look, he's he's undersized. If you actually look at him uh, compared to some of these other offensive tackles that have been drafted, he's a pretty undersized guy. Um, he's going to need to beef up a little more to, you know, to have the prototypical size that you would want your offensive lineman to have. And then he lacks swiftness. He's stiff as a boy. He's pretty much stuck in the mud if you get a defense alignment to hit him with a twist. So he's going to have to get a little more swift. Yeah, I mean, yeah, A.J. Terrell's kind of a mixed bag at 16. I think what Atlanta really wanted to do was go get C.J. Henderson, but they really couldn't get away to trade up to get what they wanted. And, of course, he went off the board early. So I can see the trades that made Terrell the third quarterback off the board in times. But, yeah, you remember, like Jay said, man, he got – he was put on a poster by Jamar Chase, and that was just in the one game. I mean, there was probably some other ones you could point to. And, you, you know, when you're talking about the going to the NFL, you're going to be playing guys like Jamar Chase every week. So – I, I think with the departure of Trufant, they felt like they probably had to get a corner, and they just kind of took him. And I don't know, it's one of those picks where you feel like they kind of reached for what they needed. Uh, he could still be really good. He's got a lot of intangible traits that could make him a very good NFL corner. So we'll, we'll kind of see. But for now, that pick's hard to be too high on. And, you know, Marlon Davidson, he broke it down really well, Drink. He's kind of got that in-between, like, sort of tweener status to him. Uh, and Atlanta seems to be endlessly investing in that defensive line. But uh, between him and Dante Fowler, that pass rush should be markedly better than it was. So that's going to be hopefully a good thing for them 
And, um, you know, with Matt Hennessy, again, like you kind of broke it down, you know, I think the offensive line in the, the day did need some help. And when you're picking a guy in the third round, there's going to be some things, you know, that to work on. Um, but they, they're relying on some first round picks with some questionable output and injuries and whatnot. So getting another guy to help the kind of the Todd Gurley experience there, can't knock it too much. Solid, not spectacular in my opinion. I gave him a B minus. All right, guys, let's wrap up with the Saints drink. What do you think about them? Uh, I gave the Saints a C minus. Uh, they had a solid drop. I guess it was all right. Uh, with their first pick, Caesar Ruiz, the center out of Michigan with the 24th pick. Hey, listen, he plays good. He bends well. He's good with leverage. I like that his foot, his lateral slide can can mirror anyone that's across from him. So I, I, I also like that. He has clear eyes. He can identify most pre and post uh, matchup danger. That's good for the quarterback because, as we know, Sometimes those centers be calling just as many sets as quarterbacks when um, when you're setting up that play. So that's very important. Some things I've seen that he need to work on uh, is he need to work on his width and his frame. He's a, a like he's he's big, but he's like skinny big. I don't know how to quite describe it, but he's skinny gonna fat. need skinny worst. fat, right? The worst. <laughs> so <laughs> he gotta he gotta get himself a little wider so he can you know what I'm saying touch both guys on both sides of him being that he a center and not leave a significant gap. And then he need to work he need to work on steering his blocks into the desired positions. Cause I guess he got a habit of steering the blocks the wrong way that probably ends up in the sack when you usually do that. So he needs to work on that. Then with their second pick, uh Zach Braun, the linebacker out of Wisconsin with the 74 pick. He's a twitch explosive guy. He has quick hands to punch and play around blocks, which is good. I think that's a big ten thing. And he has good uh, tackling range with speed to go with it. Now, what does he need to work on? I just said he got a good tackling range. However, for some reason, he'll whiff on you in the open, in the open field. That ain't, that ain't it. You got to be able to make the tackles in the open field. You're the linebacker. But it happens. He needs to work on it. And he needs to work on his mechanics as far as uh, his pass uh, rush, uh, his count in a way, uh, when he needs to twist, when he needs to punch, when he needs to pull through. He needs to work on that. And then with the third pick, Adam Trauman, uh, tight end out of Dayton with the 100 field pick. Shots out to Dayton. I didn't even know they football player. Um, in college, he was uh, heavily targeted and he- he- uh, highly productive. Um, evidently, he can get up to top speed very quickly for a tight end. His ball adjustment comes very natural for a guy of his size. But listen, that's how I find the dandy. But if you catch the ball and you don't give me anything, I'm going to need you to do better. You get absolutely nothing after the catch. Where the yak at, baby? You got to get some yak in there. Um, and he will need to work on his correct hand placement when he's blocking at the edge of those lines. So, yeah, th- those are my three. Uh, and I gave this, uh, the Saints a C-. Yeah, well, they ain't have but four picks, so there isn't a whole lot to really evaluate here, but we'll go through it. Uh, I gave them a B-. I really like their first two picks. I talked about this uh, I've talked about this several times, the interior of that offensive line. They were abused against the Minnesota Vikings in that uh, wild card game. So Cesar Ruiz, uh, I thought he was the best uh, interior offensive lineman that you could get in this draft. Uh, they went for it, and I think he's going to be a great asset to them in the middle of that offensive line. I think he'll help Drew Brees out. And then Zach Bond in the third round, uh, their second pick, I thought that was a, I thought that was a good one. I like his uh, pass rush potential that he can apply. I think one of the things we look at from the Saints uh, quite often, we know Cameron Jordan's going to be coming at you on one side. Sometimes we question where else the pressure is going to come from on that Saints defense. I think Zach Bond's a guy that can maybe get it done for you. Yeah, they had an interesting draft, you know, with the four picks. It wasn't because they only had four picks going into the day, because they traded around to get these guys. It's something we got to keep in mind. You know, Ruiz is a great pick, like you all said, at 24. You broke it down well uh, between the need and the fit and how he plays. I uh, just like that you know, he's he doesn't have that, like, pure raw athleticism, but he's just a polished dude. He just does a lot of things well. Uh, he's going to fit right in with that, uh, you know, Sean Payton in that offense. But when you're talking about Zach Bond and uh, Adam Trotman, again, y'all broke it down well. These guys fit well with the team. Um, Bond seems like an outside linebacker, you know, so could even play inside a little bit. That's got a good uh, nose for the ball and, and could fit really well, again, with that Saints defense that does ask a lot out of the linebackers. And Trotman was, a lot of people thought, one of the better tight ends in this class as far as an overall well-rounded tight end. The problem is that Trotman cost you not only this year's third-round pick in a swap, but also next year's third-round pick. I think you sent it to Cleveland. And then um, – I'm sorry, that was the bond trade. And then Trotman cost most of your day three ammo, pick 130, 169, 203, and 244 to go get. So you traded essentially six players for two. Uh, and then you picked kind of a wild card, 
backup quarterback project in the seventh round. So, I mean, the couple players you got were nice, but boy, that's a lot to trade for just a couple dudes. So I gave it a B because I'm leaning high on these three players, but that better be good because you gave up a lot to go get them.